But the scientific world moves slowly, and Dr. Zamboni's research suggests the earlier patients are treated, the better the result. MS is a progressive disease and strikes young people. So if we lose time, there are a lot of young people that progresses without possibility to get back. And this is very heavy for me, really. But for Dr. Zamboni, this has always been more than a scientific quest. It's a journey fueled by love. His wife, Elena, developed MS over a decade ago, and she was one of his team's first test subjects. I immediately. <laughs> I tested my wife immediately. And? And I found the narrowing. Elena was also one of the first patients who was liberated from those blocked veins nearly three years ago. An intensely private woman, she chose not to speak on camera, but told us she's not had an MS attack since. In the MRI, we do not have actually uh, disease activity at all. And uh, she returned to completely to their activity. She's normal? Yes. If you perform a neurological examination, you are not too capable to find neurological deficit. When you look at her now, what do you think? You think, I helped her? What I think is this is probably the best prize. The best prize of the research. His best prize and a gift that Dr. Zamboni now wants to share with MS patients around the world. Dr. Zamboni's scientific paper on the liberation treatment will be published next week, sure to further the debate on his radical treatment for multiple sclerosis. Now, if you want to learn more about this story, you can go to our website at w5.ctv.ca. You'll find additional information, including useful links. The edge of something new. Yes. Yeah. I, I Why? believe this uh, because... Uh, is a really strong mechanism because drainage uh, is uh, one of the main regulatory mechanisms for the life, for the life of the cell, for the life of the body. So it is very important to maintain drainage in the best uh, effective uh, way as much as we can as physician. Right. Drainage. So then you feel this is a whole new way of looking at MS. Absolutely. No doubt about it. No. I have no doubt about this because I have enough proof from our preliminary study uh, to be confident that this is a very important point in, uh, as a causative, as a part of the causative element of this disease. Okay. So about MS, is MS an autoimmune disease? Yes, of course. We have proof that it is an autoimmune disease. What is very interesting to understand and what is not known, actually, is what is the trigger of an autoimmunity reaction. And uh, uh, I think that our theory is strong enough to support that one of the trigger of the autoimmunity reaction could be venous dysfunction. Right. Has anyone ever proven the actual cause of MS prior to this? When you went looking backwards, no, no, and no, no, no. did you ever find anyone who said, okay, this is what starts the immune reaction? Did anyone ever no, say that? No, no, no. No, there is uh, no causative element with enough evidence to be identified as the trigger. Did that bother you? Sorry? Ti ero preoccupato che non c'era il causa? Oh, know? this is one of, of, of uh, this is one of, may, of the main point at the beginning of my research. And... Uh, so, Which was what? One of the main questions that you had at the beginning uh, was what? 
I began this research because I was interested in multiple sclerosis because uh, my wife uh, had uh, multiple sclerosis. So I tried to understand uh, more and uh, I didn't find uh, a good explanation of the causative uh, element of autoimmune artery disease and reaction. What I found in the old literature was uh, an involvement of venous uh, system, of the cerebral venous system, in this disease. Which means, cerebral venous system means what? The blood flow through the brain? Yes. The but coming in and going no, out? There, there was uh, the, the point that who attracted me very much was that uh, the plaque of multiple sclerosis, that are the main lesion, have always a vein in their center. So it's a venocentric disease. So those white lesions in the MRIs yes. have spread, a vein in them. Spread along venous vasculature of the brain, and the vein have a central position in the lesion. That's interesting. I didn't know that. But what Do is most interesting doctors know that? that? that the, the, yes, but what is very interesting is that Charcot, who was the man who described for the first time this uh, disease, described the venocentricity in the first publication mm -hmm. in the 19th century. So they found something back yes, then. Yes, yes. And also, people from the uh, U.S., uh, prior to the Second World War, described congestion in the vein in post-mortem studies. Right. And it was beautiful. The example of a Danish neurologist who followed up for the entire life their patient and with great pietas, this is a Latin term, performed the post-mortem studies and found the history of the life of these patients. And the conclusion of Dr. Fogg was the MS progress in a sense opposite to the normal sense of venous circulation of the brain. Which means simply? Simply this, that uh, the plaque develop counter current. Backwards. Yes. And this suggested me that probably the flow was opposite to the normal physiological flow. And uh, so I started for developing a non-invasive system. Well, question, let me just stop yeah. you there. In relation to all of this were all those autopsies that kept finding iron in the yeah. brain. Lots of iron in patients with MS. Yes. Did you see that when you went looking in the history of it? Yes. And your, your question must have been, how does that iron get there? Yes. I, I can uh, solve you this very rapidly because for the entire my life, I was involved in understanding venous function because also in other part in this district of the body is not well known. And uh, this attracted me from a speculative point of view. So I began very expert in venous hemodynamics and also in iron-related uh, tissue injury. 